Rachel Joyce's latest, uh, Miss Benson's Beetle. Um, Rachel Joyce is the author of The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry, which is one of my favorite, favorite books to recommend to people because it's just such a good story about a journey. This one is equally about a journey, but it's more of historical, uh, set, in, set in another time period as opposed to a contemporary time. It was thoroughly enjoyable. Um, and it's, it's also, like Lillian Boxfish, less concerned with the actual figures of the time period and more concerned with the, uh, the atmosphere of the time period, kind of the zeitgeist, if you will. Um, Ms. Benson's Beetle is set in post-war England uh, for the first part, a war fatigued society of constant rationing, a generation of left behind women and disappeared men lost to the war. This is perhaps a most, the most poignant sad element that Joyce chooses to explore. Uh, the vets that have returned shell shocked or with symptoms of PTSD uh, during the time when most people did not recognize the longstanding damage that war inflicts on people fighting. Um, men who are sad and angry and left to their own devices. And all of this is kind of encapsulated in one of the main figures of the story. But before we get to that figure, we get Marjorie Benson. Um, so the story opens, um, she's at the age of 10. Her father, a keen entomologist, shows her a beautiful book of, uh, a beautiful book called Incredible Creatures. And these are creatures that are not only, rumor, that are only rumored to exist, uh, but not, have not actually been identified. Um, in the sense that they are not yet part of the Museum of Natural History's collection. And this is a refrain that Marjorie keeps bringing up as that these, these creatures, nothing, nothing exists in the world unless it's been captured and identified and pinned and you know, um, given a Latin name by the Museum of Natural History in, in London. So very important. Um, so the most striking of the creatures in this book to Marjorie uh, is the golden beetle of New Caledonia. And New Caledonia is an island off the coast of Australia um, that was a then a uh, territory of France um, with, a, with a British presence. Um, the first scene or chapter reminded me of uh, one of the very first chapters of another historical fiction title uh, called The Guest Book by Sarah Blake. Uh, the chapter ends with a very shocking event that almost ruins the book. You're like, how can, how can the book continue past this point? Uh, but while the novel packs other surprises that unfold slowly, uh, this one is necessary to get out of the way in order to understand the sadness that propels Marjorie to her project. The book then jumps forward 30 years, and Marjorie is now a mostly sad and lonely home and economics teacher in England in 1950. Something has happened in those 30 years that has made her, that has put her in the position she is. But suddenly one day upon realizing the degree to which her students are making a fool of her appearance, she's sad, she's let go, she's drab, she needs a haircut. Uh, she commits a very unusual out of character but punishable act and flees the school. Needless to say, she's relieved of her position and finds herself without a vocation. Another common, re another refrain that's repeated by the calendar, ca uh, characters over and over. Uh, so she decides this, this is the time to do what she's always dreamed, travel across to the travel across the world to New Caledonia, the home of the golden beetle, and bring back specimens to be added to the museum's collection. So in addition to practicalities like saving money and accumulating supplies for the voyage, she decides that she needs an assistant. And after several failed attempts at recruiting, she gets Enid Pretty. <laughs> She's a great character. A seemingly ditzy polar opposite to Mar Marjorie's stoic popularity. She even begins by calling her Marge without invitation, just um, which is Marjorie is very annoyed by. But of course, the most, as with most stories of this sort, once they are stuck in the thick of the journey, facing all of the challenges that truly test their resilience and fortitude, and despite the sad histories of loss each carries with them, they find they make the best possible pair. Do they find the beetle? Well, of course, you'll have to read it to find out. And that's really only half the story anyway. It's a story in the vein of a classic adventure, polar opposites thrown together on a strange journey in a strange new world neither could ever imagine themselves in before. It's a fantastic story of travel and friendship, so many of the things that we need that we might be missing right now. Um, and I highly re recommend it.